Hello everyone and welcome to our wooden bunny program. Today we are going to be making exactly what you see on the screen, this cute little wooden bunny. In your kits you should have gotten your block of wood, wire, your little heart nose, some ribbon, and some burlap. Um, outside of that from home you're going to need some paint brushes, water to clean your brushes, glue, um, the quicker the dry is probably better so like hot glue gun or super glue or something like that um, just because it's going to hold these pieces together a little bit better there's going to be some a little bit of layering in there uh, outside of that you're also going to need some scissors and then a pen or a pencil oh and in your kits there should have also been paint for all of it as well if you'd like to use different colors feel free if you want to make like a cute little light brown bunny or a gray bunny go for it uh, I just wanted white because it pops well against the pink colors and gives a good contrast there so I am going to grab my kit here and I'm going to put this off to the side I'll reference it every now and then while we're going through the project so here is my block of wood that we've got here and you'll notice that I have one with some chips in it that's also got a blue bottom there so I'm just going to leave that on the bottom and since there's that big chip on this side I'm going to use this side. So this is going to be the very front of my bunny. I've got my ribbon which I'm going to put off to the side for a minute. I have got my burlap. Again I'm going to put that off to the side. And then I have my wires. Put those off to the side. So the only two things that you should have in front of you to start things off with is going to be both of your wood pieces because we are going to paint. So I've got both my pieces here, my heart and my block. I am going to do the block first so that we can hopefully get that dry by the time I'm done with my heart. So we'll put the heart off to the side just a little bit. I have a plate with my paints here. I didn't want to use up those cute little containers that you guys have in your kits just so that we can use them for other programs. So I have less paint here than you guys have, which means you should have more than enough to take care of your project with. So I am going to grab a large brush. I'm actually going to be used just like a spongy one. Um, you can also use regular brushes, whatever you have at home, whatever will work best for you. And I am going to go ahead and just start to paint this and I am just going to cover the entire thing in white. Once I am done covering it in white on my original one and actually let me pull that over for reference real quick. I don't know if you can tell I'm going to try to put it pretty close but I also went over with a real real light layer of gray which is why I included that in your kits and it doesn't it doesn't even cover the complete canvas. You can kind of see it on the camera there, but just kind of streaks of it. Just to give it a little bit of a little bit of a kind of old worn feeling. You could also, if you have some sandpaper at home, you could sand your edges and bits and pieces of the wood so that the wood pops through the white color. Anything that you'd like to do, or if you want it to be crisp and clean, you can just leave it the one color that you paint it. So if you just want a light brown bunny, paint the whole thing light brown and leave it as is. So I'm gonna fill this in here. And you'll notice, so these spots, and actually I wasn't even on camera when I was doing that. These spots down here at the bottom because there were some chips in mine, I just am dabbing so that the excess paint will go in those spots. So really just using that sponge brush to dab all the way through and then brush strokes afterwards. And I want all of my brush strokes to be the same as the grains of wood. So that's why I'm painting up and down so that it lines up with the grains of wood. And we're going to paint all of our sides and the top. You can see here through the top, sides, but you can leave your bottom as is because it's going to be standing on that, so no one is going to see the bottom of your block of wood anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these other sides of my block. Once I'm done, I'll pop back on here and we will go to the next step. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna let a few of the sides of my black dry while I go ahead and start my heart. I am using, and what you guys have in your kits is acrylic paint, so it should dry pretty quickly. And if it gets on your fingers, it's okay, it's washable. However, if it gets on your clothes, you're gonna wanna try to get that off as quickly as possible. It is likely to stain because it's acrylic. So, I'm gonna pick up my heart here and I'm gonna try to wiggle wiggle this guy with the wet paint over a little bit. There we go. So I have my heart here. And what we are gonna do for that one, I'm just gonna grab another paintbrush. There is some pink paint that is included in your kit and we are just going to paint the heart. And you only need to paint one side of the heart, so pick whichever you'd like. Paint that one side because the other side is going to be glued down. So don't have to worry about getting both sides done. For that. There we go. Oop. Make sure that you're working on a surface that you are comfortable getting paint on and make sure that you have clothes that you are comfortable getting paint on just in case. I know a lot of us aren't aren't too messy with our crafts but it can get messy whether or not you're anticipating it. hair stuck in my paint there. Okay, that is all painted and ready to go. I'm going to let that dry off to the side. I'll clean out that brush with my cup of water. And then while we're waiting for some of those sides to dry with that paint there, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to start working on the ears of the bunny. So for the ears, if you would like to have ears on your bunny, there are pieces of burlap included in your kit. What I'm gonna do is I am going to cut those out so that they are ear shape. And I'm just gonna freehand this and I'll show you. So let me pull back the other one real quick here. You can see with this one, and I actually glued it to the ribbon so that it stayed in the shape that I wanted it to stay in. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it. It's kind of like a, I'm trying to think of the right words to use here. It's kind of like an like an oval, except the ends of it are pointed. So watch as I cut. So I'm gonna start in the center and I'm just gonna do kind of a long there we go. And then I'm gonna do the same on this side. Have it go out. And then come back in. All right, so here is my ear. Leaf shaped, there we go. <laughs> Finally remembered the word I was looking for. Kind of leaf shaped is what we're going for with the ears. And you can see, well, this cutout isn't the greatest. There we go. When I lay it down, you can see it was that leaf shape that we cut out from it there. So once I have one cut out, I want them to be equal. So I'm gonna use that one to cut my second piece. I'm gonna overlap them and then cut around that piece. If you wanted to use your pen or pencil to trace it out on the other piece of burlap, go for it. I am just gonna freehand it. They don't have to be perfect because it is burlap. So they're gonna have, you know, bits and spots where they are frayed and not completely the same shape. I am good with that because it's more interesting when it's not perfect. <laughs> so I have my two ears. Once you have those cut, then you are going to, if you would like, to paint the inside of the ear that pink color, the same pink color as the nose. So I am going to start painting these. And again, I'm just gonna do freehand. So I don't have a stencil. If you'd like to draw it out, you can use a pencil or a marker, but you don't have to. 
because I've got some of that pink paint. This is going to get messy, so you're going to want to make sure that you are on a surface that you can get paint on because your paint is going to go right through the burlap because it's not a solid fabric. Well, most fabrics aren't completely solid. And just going to fill this in. Okay, so there's one ear. And actually I didn't do too bad here, but there are a couple of specks of pink. So I'm gonna put that off to the side so it can dry. And then I'm gonna do my other one. Now if you are enjoying this project here, once a month we always have a craft program called Pinterest for adults and that is because we get all of our craft ideas from Pinterest. It is a website that has lots of crafts and recipes and all sorts of things. If you think your kids would like these there is a junior Pinterest program that we run regularly. We also have family craft. Lots of fun crafty programs. So now I'm going to grab my other ear, see if they line up, make this a little bit longer. There we go. I think they look fairly even. So I'm good with that. I'm going to put them off to the side to dry. And then I am going to go back to our block of wood over here. So the front is still a little wet, as you can tell, I just got paint on my hand. So I'm going to let that dry for a few more minutes while it is drying. I'm going to go ahead and work on our bow for the very top. You can see the very top. We've got a cute little bow. If you would like to make it a bow tie on your bunny, go for it. So you would just put the bow underneath the mouth instead of at the top of the head. You have ribbon that you received in your kit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm unrolling my ribbon here. And then I am going to tie a bow in the center of this ribbon. Ooh, I should get on camera doing this. <laughs> so I'm tying a bow, just a regular old bow. Some of you received some ribbon with some wire in it. Some of you just got regular ribbon. Either way is gonna work out just fine. So I've tied my regular bow and it's, it's very uneven. <laughs> so now that it's tied, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to carefully kind of just move around, pull the ends and just get it to where I want it to be. So it's gonna be a lot of little adjustments. I have a wired one right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the two sides of the wire so that it's nice and straight. There we go, we got one, one side that's looking fairly nice there. I'm gonna keep going with this other side. There we go. That needs to be a little bit smaller. I also wanna make that side smaller. Having a problem staying on camera today. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that looks like a real, real nice size to me for the bow there. So what I'm gonna do now is on this one here, you can see I cut the ends so that they had the pretty little points on them. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this ribbon. So once you have your bow at your desired length, I gave you guys plenty of ribbon so that you can make it as big or as small as you'd like. Then you are going to find where you'd like your ends to be. So I've got mine here and I am just going to trim it because I don't want super long ends on mine. And I'll make sure to keep this on the camera while I do it. If you want those cute little points that I was showing you before, you're just gonna cut in and cut into a center point. So I am going to cut in. And 
and cut in. Oh, didn't go quite far enough on that edge. There we go. And you can see we've got a nice pointed, two little points. Let me flatten that out so you can see it better. Two little points just like on the other one. So there is one edge. I'm going to go ahead and cut this one now. Try to do kind of similar, similar length here. That looks good there. There we go. So I have my nice little bow all ready for the top as soon as everything is done. Have that all tied and painted. Some helpful tips with your bows. Like I said, it's going to be a lot of pulling and tightening and figuring out exactly what size you want your bow to be. If you have the wire, you're going to want to make sure that on the ends that you pull those two ends apart so that you have the nice full bow with the wire. And even if it's not the wire one, if it's the regular ribbon, do the same thing. It helps it just pop up and stay nice there. Um, if you don't want the pointed ends on this, if you have the wire ribbon, you can do kind of like a fun um, swirl. If you want it a little bit longer, you can curl the ribbon. You can see I just did that there. And all you do for that is you just take a pen or your finger and you just wrap it around to get the ribbon in that circular thing there and then you're just gonna pull it off give it a quick little tug and then it stays in that nice little ribbon shape so if you want longer edges you could do that with the wired ribbon you can do the same thing with the regular ribbon you would just have to glue down one of the sides so that it stays like this and doesn't completely unravel so I'm going to put this off to the side up here with our other bits and pieces and I'm going to guess that this still isn't completely dry so I am going to go ahead and show you guys how we do the whiskers while we are waiting on that. So for this at the beginning of the video I had said that you're going to need a pen or a pencil. This is where that is going to come in handy and if you don't have a pen or pencil handy it's okay you can use the end of your paintbrush, you can use your finger whatever you have in front of you that you can wrap your wire around. And I'm gonna to try to work in front of the yellow here so that you can actually see me working with the wire because it's thin. So I've got a pen here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay it on top, put my thumb over it, and then I'm just going to wrap it tightly around and around until it is all the way and then I want to show you guys here, whoop, wrong side. <laughs> I'm not overlapping, I'm going down the pen. You don't want to overlap your wire because it's going to just, you can, it's not the end of the world, it's just it's going to make it more difficult when you're taking your wire off your pen or your finger or whatever it is that you're wrapping it around. So once you've got the whole piece of wire on there, you're going to keep holding the one end with your thumb and with the other end, you're going to pull and that's going to leave you with these fun curly cues. Mine's a little uneven so I'm just going to pull these apart and you can do that while it's on the pen, while it's not on the pen. And you've got this cute little like spring here so you can see when we glue them on they're going to be these fun little whiskers. So I've got one done. I'm going to go ahead and do my other three and if you don't like how it looks you can always straighten it out and do it again because it is wire. You just want to make sure you don't do it excessively because the wire is thin enough if you do it like 20 times in a row it will wear down and it could break for you but it's just excessively so if you need to do it four or five times you'll be fine. So here is one. I'm going to set that down and I'm going to do my other three real quick. Once I am done with these, our block should be dry enough to finish those other two sides. And then I can show you guys assembly. And we will have our adorable little spring wooden bunny. So again, I am just doing another one of these metal curls. And I'm just going to pull. There's that. 
All right, take that off. Ooh, got a little bit too much there. Push that back together. There we go. Another cute little whisker. Okay, so our wood block is dry now. I am going to lay it face down and I am going to finish up these last two sides. All right. Everything is nice and covered now. So what I'm actually gonna do is I am going to take, prop it up real quick so that you can see as I'm working on it. Wiggle it around so that it's right up in center. I am going to take just a little bit of that gray and I'm going to kind of press it out, get it mixed in with the white. There we go. And then I'm just going to do a few streaks right on the front. And you can already see where some of that gray has been added. Just give it a nice little rustic kind of feel to it. go and if you want to do that on your sides as well you can see just very small hints of just picking up another color there once that is done I am going to take now that pink because I want to add just the tiniest bit of blush where the cheeks are going to be you can see very very faded pink right there so I'm going to take just the tiniest amount of pink and I am going to mix that in with our white. There we go, that looks pretty well faded. And then I'm going to choose right where I want the center to be, which is gonna be right in this area here. And I am just going to dab. This is a good time to use like a sponge type paintbrush. If you don't have one, that's fine. You can definitely use a regular brush too, but you're just going to kind of pat down instead of brush strokes. So, just get some nice pink in here. It's perfect. Okay. So now that I've gotten that, I'm gonna add just a little bit more light. There we go. I like it to be very, very faded. I'm gonna pick this up so that you can see. Oh, actually you can't really see that very well. It's super, super faded pink. It's not very dark at all. If you like a lot of blush, go all out. Put pink little circles up there, that'll look cute. You just wanna make sure that it's not the same pink as the nose, cause you don't want it all to blend together. Now that we've got those little details there, what I'm going to do is I am going to do the eyes and the little um, freckles right around where the whiskers are going to be. And that's going to be done with the black paint. So what we're going to do is right above where the pinkness was from the blush is where we're going to paint the eyes. And then right around where the blush is is where we're going to put the specks for the freckles there. If you want, you can kind of take a look and see where you're going to want your heart nose to be. So I'm thinking probably right in the center of where that pink area was that we did. So I am going to paint the eyes. With the eyes, all you're going to be doing is painting two black circles and then putting a little white circle inside of it. If you want to paint your eyes another way, go for it. This is just the easiest way that I know how. 
so the tricky part is making sure that they are equal. So I am going to do, oh, I'm trying to do this so that you guys can see it. Let's see, mm, back's pretty dry. Should be good for me to lay it down. All right, so I am going to paint right here. And then make sure that it's filled in real nice. Got some frayed bits of my brush at the end there. Fix that a little bit. I'm gonna try using a different brush here. This one's a little bit smaller, a little bit nicer. There we go. All right, so get it all nice and filled in. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so. That looks good there. And I'm going to come over and try to do the exact same thing on this side. And you heard me say it that it's not interesting if it's perfect. So it's okay if they are not exactly the same size or if they're not exactly centered. So there are my eyes there. To do the little freckles, all you're gonna do is take the very tip of your brush and just put a few dots all over. Have as many or as few as you would like. I'm just going to fill in so that there's a nice amount here. Oh, try to even out this side a little bit too. There we go. And then let me hold this up to you so that you can see them all. So there we go. And then for the eye, I just need to do the white on the very inside part there. And what you're going to do is if your paint is not completely dry, then you're going to want to make sure that you kind of, not glob, glob isn't the right word, but have a decent amount of paint at the end of your brush because you don't want that white to smudge in with your black. So let me show you what I mean. So I have got quite a bit of white paint on the tip of my brush there. And all I'm going to do is put a dot right there and just come right back up. Let me get my camera a little bit closer that you guys so that you can get a better view this next time. So have quite a bit of white paint on the end of your brush and then you're just going to set it down and pick it back up. And that's it. There we go. We got our nice eyes. We got some freckles. The whole thing is painted. We've got all our accessories ready. So now we are going to assemble. So first things first is we are going to need to figure out where we want to place that nose. I want mine to go right there. Since that is right where my nose is going to go, then we're going to want to put our wires down first. Let's zoom out just a little bit so you can get the full picture here. So I'm going to take my wire. I am going to unscrew the end just a little bit so that we've got enough for it to glue down on. You can leave the loop as long as it's going to lay flat against the wood. Once that's there, I'm going to get my glue now. I'm just going to put it right on my wire there. Put it all on. 
And then I'm going to put it right there. I'm going to do the same thing with my next piece of wire. Just make sure that I flatten the one, one curl so that I can then... And if you have uh, wire cutters at home and you want to trim down any of these, I made them long enough so that everyone would have nice long ones. But if you like shorter ones, you are more than welcome to do that. And I am going to... Oh! My glue stick fell out of my glue gun. Put another one in there. There we go. Put my glue right on the wire again there. And I'm actually going to put it right under the first one that I did. There's that. Now on the opposite side, I'm going to do the same thing, just the opposite direction. So flatten one curl add my glue and then stick that right down on the end there. Oop. There we go. So we've got one more left to do. And if you need help holding any of it up, you could always stick like a paint bottle under it. Or just hold it down until the hot glue dries. This is why we wanted that quick drying glue. Unfortunately, my hot glue gun is a little melty today. Oh, and that actually did not stick. That's another nice thing about hot glue is if it didn't work the first time, you can always just do it again. So I'm going to do that and stick that down. And actually, I've got enough glue on that one. And just hold that down for a few seconds. Okay, it looks like that's nice and dry. This one again, I just bent down one curl, put some glue on it. There we go. And we'll stick it right down. Once you have all of those on, You're going to see where this lines up. You might need to unwind some of your spots just a little bit. I think this one I'm going to have to. So I'm just going to unwind that just a little bit. Ooh. And this one's still drying a little bit. And that actually looks perfect. So now I am going to put a nice glob. I keep using the word glob. It's not a great word for this. <laughs> put a nice, quite a bit of glue on the back. Because you want to make sure that it sticks not only on top of the wire, but also to the wood itself. So we've got quite a bit of glue there. Flip it over, put it down. And then you're going to press firmly and just hold that there for a couple of minutes while your glue dries. So we'll leave that there. Now you might notice, once I bring this back up, that the edge of my heart I did not paint. And it's okay if, some of, if you wanted to paint yours, go for it. Um, I liked that it was... The wood color, I really liked kind of the contrast between the pink and the white and the wood color, and I thought that was really, really cute. Again, if these whiskers are too long for you, you can trim them down. You, If you have good scissors, don't ruin your good scissors. It is wire. <laughs> so it's not going to, 
not going to work with these. If you've got these type of scissors, don't do it. <laughs> um, but you can use wire cutters to trim those down. And once it is trimmed down to your desired length, you've got that. So we've got a whole nice, nice face going on here for our bunny. I am going to prop that up and adjust our camera here. You can see we've got our nice, nice cute little bunny. Now I am going to add the ears. So let's prop this up just a little bit more so that you can see as I add the ears to this. What we're gonna do is these are gonna be glued on, you can do it one of two ways. If no one's gonna see the back, you can glue right to the back of your wood and then you probably won't have to glue the tip of the ears anywhere else. If you think people might see the back of your wood, then we will glue right to the top. So that's what I'm gonna do, is I don't know where I'm gonna display this, so I'm just gonna put it right on top. So we're gonna put a line of glue right here, and then we are going to just put the edge of the burlap, and be careful because burlap is not solid, so you do not want to touch where you glued, otherwise you're going to burn yourself, and we definitely don't want that. So be very, very careful if you are using hot glue with the burlap. And I'm just going to let that dry real quick. Once this dries, I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the other ear. So since it's on there, it should stay in place. I'm just gonna lean the ear forward while I work on the other one. Again, little line of glue. You wanna have enough there so that it'll stick. Take the bottom of your ear, put it right there. Do not touch the glue if you are using your bare hands. And then you're just gonna let that dry real quick. So now we've got two ears on our cute little bunny. And you'll notice that they just kind of flop down, um, which is fine. That is exactly what happened on the other one that I worked on, which is why I'm gonna show you what we do after we get the bow on. So we've got our nice little bow. What you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out where that's going to lay. So mine's gonna be right on the front there. So I am going to put glue along this bottom back side of it. If you don't want to mess up your ribbon, you can just put the glue right on the wood. So I am going to put a nice bit of glue here. Again, I am putting quite a bit just because I want to make sure that it sticks nice. And then just going to keep that flat against it for a few minutes here. Once this dries, I'm going to angle the ears and then I'm going to show you the trick that I used on the other bunny. Now I see like the edges of this because it's wire. I can curl it a little bit so that it's not so harsh and straight right there. There we go. All right, so that is stuck on there. If you have some glue sticking out the front, not a big deal. You can either cover that with cute little detail if you've got like a button or something, or if you just wanna like put a little bit of paint over it, whatever. So we've got that there. The trick for the ears and let me move this up so that we can see this while I work on it. The trick to the ears is you're going to put the tiniest amount of glue on the very tip of the ear, and then you're going to attach it to the ribbon. Again, if you're using you know, your fingers to do this, be very, very, very careful. So it's gonna be right on the back side, and we're just going to put the smallest amount. You can hardly see it. And then we're just going to attach it right on the inside of the bow here. Let it dry real quick. And there is ear number one. 
We're going to do the exact same thing with ear number two. The tiniest amount of glue ever and put it right on the inside. go. From here, if you want to reposition your ears or your bow at all, go for it. Otherwise, we have our finished product. Cute little wooden bunny. So there's the one that we just made. Here is the one that I made earlier. Cute little pair here. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. There's a few little tidbits, um, a few things that I mentioned throughout this. If you want to place this as a bow tie, instead of gluing it at the top here, you're gonna glue it right down here. You can, you can do either one you'd like. If you do that, what you're gonna do with the ears is you're gonna glue the very tip of it to the base here so that they flap over with standing upright. If you don't wanna do that, you wanna have pointed bunny ears, you can always use, if you have at home, some popsicle sticks that will help prop it up or even a toothpick is probably good enough for this. Um, you would just glue that to the back side of the bunny ear so that no one would see it and then you're not gonna wanna have the back of the bunny available for anyone to see while it's on display. The other thing is, is if you are gonna have the back on display, another tip that I said while we were painting, if you have a cotton ball, you can put that right there so it's got a cute little bunny tail. Or if you have any other fun decorations at home that you want to decorate this with, please feel free to send us pictures of your finished bunnies. We want to see all of them because they are so cute. Um, you're going to send that to programs at shorewoodtroylibrary.org, and I will have that email address up in just a minute when we wrap up the video. Otherwise, I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I hope you didn't make <laughs> too much of a mess other than on your fingers like I did. <laughs> if you have any questions about the project, feel free to reach out to us. Otherwise, we will see you at our next Crafty Adult Program. Thanks, and have a great night.